So today we're gonna to talk about how to design a minimalist pour over coffee maker for mass production 3D printing. So this coffee maker is a very simple design. It's a simple curve, but even though it is a simple design, there is a lot of subtlety within it that is really educational about how to design a product. Number one, it is a coffee maker, which means it comes into contact with coffee. Generally inside of 3D printing, we recommend combining as many parts and pieces as you possibly can. Because with printing, you can. You can turn complex assemblies into single monolithic parts. But here in this case, we want to make sure that the product is good and sustainable and long-term. So using a third-party part is fine. This main filter at the top that then can hold your paper filter is the way to add a little splash of metallic to it, but also improve the functionality of the part. Now, this is a minimalist maker, which means we wanted to use as little material as possible. Again, 3D printing gives us a huge benefit because you have all of this hollow feature over here on this side that has a very low infill of about three to 5%. That lets you use very little material while still having good structure and a good proportion. Because if we made this like super thin, it would just look weird and wonky. This chunky style, while still minimalist, makes it look like something robust and something reliable that you can have around. So when we designed it, we wanted to, again, make sure it was strong and reliable and didn't have any sort of supports. Now, on a lot of times on this channel, you'll see us say, I'll print it just like this at an angle. That way you don't need support. But that doesn't really work in this case because we wanted this rounded outer shell and this beautiful texture and all the rest of it. So we had to print it on its side. When printing a part on its side, it's important to be aware of the bed surface. So this part was kind of led along in its design to have this really kind of sharp chamfered edge that comes down to almost an eighth inch wide seam. This means the bed surface doesn't really impact the look of the part because the bed interface spot is so small because it's this little seam over here and this little seam over here, you can't really tell the difference between the top and the bottom. That minimal bed contact area also allows this fairly large part to be mass producible because it doesn't require manual removal. It's not stuck to the bed so terribly that someone has to pull it off. The machines are able to eject it and move on with their life that way. So you have a lot more scale with this part to where it can be produced affordably. Now, in the bottom, there's all of the kind of design accents that we did of, yes, the beautiful curve, and you have the detent in the bottom for the cup, which implies that's where you place your cup. But let's go ahead and talk about the top right here. Again, this is being printed on its side, so you have to be aware of the overhang. You don't want to have a seggy top and you don't want to have any support. With this first prototype we did, we actually have kind of a rough side over here compared to the smoother side on the bottom down there. That's less than desirable, but survivable for a lot of products if you're doing kind of small run stuff. And that can be addressed a little bit in post-processing. But if you were going for full print on demand, it is best to have design support inside of there to make sure that it's as tight and beautiful as possible. Now, looking at these teeth, these teeth come in from four directions. Now, normally something pointing down at an angle like this would need support itself. But what we did with that was actually create these overhang supports underneath here and chamfer them so that they come to a point, but at kind of a weird oblong angle, which is then mirrored on the bottom so that you can't really tell that it was intentional. Otherwise you would have have, I don't know, some chamfer at the top and then normal spikes down at the bottom and it would just look weird. But by creating the symmetrical geometry, you're able to get the points that set the filter off from the printed part because when this is plugged into the top, wherever this touches the plastic, water and surface tension is gonna pull liquid that direction, which means you could get leaks around the side of the hole rather than around the tip of the filter. So having those points and having those points guide liquid down, make sure that all the liquid goes to the point of the filter so that you have a smooth flow that's not really contacting the part. And of course, as far as texture, we went and added just a little bit of noise to it to make sure that it looks really beautiful. And we use this wonderful kind of terracotta color that just looks nice for a minimalist thing. Right now, if you would like to get access to this print, we have added it to the catalog of our Etsy plugin. So you can get a hold of it and add it to your Etsy store over there if you want to. It's a very beautiful design and most people will have one of these filters available that they can just add in the top. So it's a good example of how to create a mass producible product that's both very efficient, functions really well, while still having the proportions and thickness that it needs to look good. Whereas traditional processes just wouldn't allow you to create this type of geometry and do it economically and reliably all the way through. So hopefully you learned a little bit about mass production 3D printing. If you would like to see another version of a coffee maker that we made, go ahead and check out this video where we go for a chunkier type of aesthetic. And there's a number of different design considerations on that one that are completely different from this minimalist design. Have a great day, everybody.